Yes, hello, good afternoon. We'll start uh, in two p by two p.m. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, good afternoon to all those who are live right now. Good afternoon, Jennifer Mirasol from Santa Cruz, Laguna. Also for Del John, Emil Gellus from SD Ocabuya, Laguna. Hi. Welcome also to Alupay National High School, SD Batangas Province. Amelia Hernandez. Still have 20 minutes. I hope you guys are having a great lunch. Sorry for interrupting everyone. <laughs> Good afternoon to you. And I hope that uh, you will learn. Yes, teachers need teachers. That's true. Watching from Gloria Oriental Mindoro. Wow. And SDO City of Ilagan. Watching from Gloria Oriental Mindoro and from General Santos City. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. It's a hot Friday afternoon. <laughs> yes, hashtag teachers need teachers. Good afternoon from Buswanga District Division of Palawan. Hi. And also from San Pablo City, from Tanawan, Batangas. Hello, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon from Calamba City. I'm from San Pedro. Yeah. It's just near <laughs> San Pedro Laguna from San Buanga wow oh hi hello watching from San Pedro Laguna hello Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, good afternoon from Mandaluyong City. Yep. 
I hope you will learn a lot today. I've been learning a lot from this webinar. It's really helpful for us. Yes, we really need each other at this time, at this point, at this very moment. You know, we are the frontliners when it comes to education. We need each other. Yeah. Hello from SDO Marinduque. Hi, hi. And from Santa Maria, good afternoon. Watching from Kaloocan. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Okay, watching from Nakarlan. Marvit. Hello, teachers need teachers, yes. Watching from Kalamba. Hello, hello everyone. Hello, those from Kalamba, those teachers and educators from Kalamba. Hi. Oh, hi. I thank you so much for watching. Yes, I'll be uh, giving some Microsoft tools again, but. Wow, this this is going to be exciting for today. Uh, I'll, I'll be adding more uh, other uh, technology platforms that you can utilize in your classroom. So I hope, okay? Again, uh, you don't really need to do everything. Okay? Just get those that you um, can implement right away in your classroom. Yes. Yes. Oh, thank you so much, L. Yes, uh, really inspired me to strive harder to fit. Yes, they, um, I tell you, I'm not. I'm not. To be honest, I'm not like this five years ago. Okay. Uh, you really need to start somewhere. You really need to start start somewhere. And from all of the experiences, you know, you will meet more teachers. You will meet more students. All of these experiences, when you put it together, it will, it will, it's really different. <laughs> I, 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 can, I can say it's life changing for me because I didn't really realize that it's going to be this far. It's going to be this, this, the, the learning experiences I had. Okay. So, yeah, you have to start somewhere. And I know that you can do it. Hello from Burgos Rodriguez Rizal. And um, yeah, from Kalamba. Yeah. Hello, yes, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Have a great day. Thanks. Thank you so much. We'll start uh, two o'clock and yeah. So we'll for for today we will be dealing more on how are we going to do our instruction. Okay? The materials that we are using in the classroom, in a normal set, in a normal classroom setup, and how we can how we can improve more. Okay. Yes, definitely, absolutely. Yeah. Teachers need teachers. At this very moment, we need each other. 
That's true. Thank you so much for joining us today. I know that you have your own schedules, but going here, it's 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 really amazing. Okay. And yep. I'm gonna teach you okay, just a you know a um a subic this way. So this simple cube here, let's see what it can do later. <laughs> I'm really excited. I'm really excited to show to everyone how can we do our instructions more efficient, more creative as a teacher. Hello, so good afternoon from Santiago City, Isabella. Hello, hello, and from Lipa Batangas. And good afternoon from General Pino Nueva Ecija. Hi, glad to see you all here. And yes, we will be we will be starting in a bit. Okay. So our topic for today is instructional materials using technology platforms. How can we make our instructional materials more creative, more engaging for our students? Hi, hi, everyone. Yes. Thank you so much for joining me. I know you have your own busy schedules. Uh, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. Okay. 
everything. And I hope you will learn a lot from our session. Yep. Good afternoon from Santa Rosa, Laguna. Hi, hi. Hello. Gandang hapon sa inyong lahat. So, let's see how we can make our instruction, our instructional materials more engaging for our students. Yes. Especially right now, if we are going to do remote learning, how can we make it possible, right? Hello, good afternoon. Yes. Good afternoon uh, sa mga taga Lucena and from Mauban, uh, Quezon and from Zamboanga. Hi! Thank you so much for joining and I hope you will join me for the next hour and 30 minutes. Okay. Hello, good afternoon from Zamwanga del Sur. Hi. Hello, good afternoon from Quezon City. Hi, hi. And from Cagayan. I think we are well represented this afternoon. We have from Luzon, we have from Visayas, and we have from Mindanao. Thank you so much for, yeah, for appreciating. Yeah, I did this for my class <laughs> yeah i did it for my class so after i learned how after i knew that we will be going remote in our instruction i right away oh i have to make it really engaging <laughs> for my students yeah that one Hello, good afternoon from Agoncillo Batangas. Hi. Kindly use the hashtag, hashtag teachers need teachers. Yes, we need each other. I'm an educator also. I'm a teacher. And yes, okay, we need each other. Okay, that's why I'm here. <laughs> I'm, I wanted to share how I do, okay? do this remote learning, how I do this integration of technology in my classroom. Hello, good afternoon from Moncada, Tarlac, and from Naga City. We'll be starting in a bit. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. And Hey, hello, Sir Rembert, Principe from Marinduque. Hi. Wow, a lot. Thank you so much for joining. Teachers need teachers. Yes, we need each other. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so excited for our topic uh, this afternoon because, um, yeah, I really, I really like curating my lessons and creating different uh different materials and doing different methods in my teaching okay that's how i engage and i motivate my students because i know that sometimes you know it's ang, ang hirap sa ating mga teachers na though we we have this creativity in mind but how can we how can we do it together with technology how can we integrate technology while not compromising our curriculum, while not compromising our content. So how can we make it more for our students? So yeah. Hi, good afternoon from San Pedro, Laguna. Yes. 
So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our uh, webinar this afternoon. Before I begin, uh, I I was searching a couple of days ago on uh, this uh, website, and I found this useful information. I shared this last time I had my webinar, and I wanted to share this also to you. How does education look like around the world amidst the outbreak? Now, because we are, most of us, we are looking at education. We are looking at learning in our context. But how is it, or how does it look like in another context, in countries from different parts of the world? Now, I found out, okay, in this website from World Bank just recently, in Malaysia, one of our neighbor, neighboring countries, there was a new TV channel that was launched on April 6, 2020 to deliver education television programs to all students, especially those without internet access. So the television and the radio programs, they were also live streamed. And the online learning platform of the Ministry of Education in Malaysia also hosts on-demand content for students across pre-kindergarten to secondary school, as well as digital textbooks. Now in Bhutan, the Ministry of Education launched the Bhutan e-learning program on March 27, 2020, that allows students from pre-K to 12 to access lessons through educational television, as well as on YouTube. The broadcasting schedules are published on their website. In Brazil, the state of Amazonas and Pará have launched a strategy relying heavily on the use of educational television. Their content is also available in their YouTube channel and is complemented with their online platform. The state of Amazonas has produced guidelines for system managers, for teachers, for students, and parents. In Kenya, the Ministry of Education shared guidelines for enhancing teaching and learning for its 15 million students out of school as a result of school closures. From March 23, 2020, there were four main platforms that are being used for delivering educational programs and resources to learners. In Jamaica, the Ministry of Education, Youth, and Information has put in place support initiatives targeted at all levels of the education system to the end of April 2020, and they said that they will be continuing as needed. This support includes several services for students, including printing service and printed learning kits for students without internet connection educational television lessons and rebroadcasts accessible on 25 cable channels. In Rwanda, the Education Board has taken few steps to support students with remote learning. It has begun broadcasting education radio programs as of April 4, 2020, which are also available on its district level radio stations. In Ecuador, the country is proceeding along two tracks while schools are closed, one for students with con connectivity and one for students without connectivity. More than 80 digital pedagogical resources are being shared using social media as well as via traditional media coverage, such as radio and television. Materials are also available in audio format in order to reach remote areas. In Paraguay, the government signed an agreement with Microsoft to cover the e-learning needs of 60,000 teachers and 1,200,000 students at zero cost. I was trying to look for the Philippines, but they don't have the information there. Well, I, I know that the Philippines is doing a lot right now. But surprisingly, I found this information from statista.com just last March 2020 that the Philippines ranked first in spending longer on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, 
well, probably because of webinars like this as well. We average 71% out of 44% world average. This is according to in-home media consumption due to the coronavirus outbreak among internet users worldwide as of March 2020. Furthermore, in the Philippines, this is what's going on. Philippines taps TikTok users to address coronavirus tourism impact. So they are encouraging millennials to dance while featuring their hometown's tourism. We keep the learning going in spite of this crisis. The crisis that we are facing. Well, as I research from the world population uh, review, some of these countries I mentioned are even third world countries and same as us, developing countries. So why can't we do the same? I have a huge respect to our dear teachers and school leaders. And I know that we have so many brilliant minds and great ideas in the Philippines. And yeah, I'm sorry for the technical, the, the connection, but we're back. Yes, we are back, right? <laughs> and yeah, moving, moving on. Uh, we, I know that we have so many, you know, resources in the Philippines and we should utilize this or else again we will be left behind we, we don't want to be left behind with these countries technology might be more efficient than us teachers but we we can be more superior than this technology because we are the creator good afternoon everyone and again welcome to our session this afternoon I am Raymond Mitchell Africa. I'm an IBMYP science and design teacher. I'm a Microsoft Innovative Educator and recipient of Web Asia Leadership Awardee and ISDE PLN Educator of the Year Awardee. Our discussion this afternoon will be revolving around creating or making instructional materials using technology platforms. Now, what are we going to learn today? So it's just simple. We are going to define what is instructional materials or what are instructional materials. And we will be, or I will be demonstrating how can we utilize different technology platforms, PowerPoint, Microsoft Word, VR, simulations, in order to create instructional materials. Now, what are these instructional materials? Instructional materials are those materials or things used by us, teacher, in order to simplify our teaching. Instructional materials include both the visual and audiovisual aids, The use of instructional materials in the classroom has the potential to help us teachers explain new concepts clearly. Uh, we do have to consider that our students have different learning abilities. Some are auditory learners, and through these instructional materials, we can uh, we can uh, do our instruction we can implement our methods without compromising their learning abilities, okay? Which can then result in better understanding of the concepts being taught. However, they are not ends in themselves, but they are means to an end. Advantages of instructional materials or organization of the materials. Yes, um, I'm, I am using Microsoft Sway right now. Yeah, I, I, I actually use Microsoft Sway so that, you know, um, I can show you how it's used, okay? So it's, uh, it's, it's from Microsoft, Microsoft Sway. Yes, um, what are the advantages of instructional materials? 
Now, the benefits of instructional materials are first to organize our materials. So instructional materials gives the teacher and the student a method of analyzing. Uh, okay. All right. For one. Of, of analyzing uh, progress. And uh, next is to focus, all right? The next benefit of instructional materials are, it is to have a guide that allows the student to know and focus on what is being taught. I'm going to share. Yes. All right. And I'm going to make my screen bigger. All right. Okay. I think that one would work. Yes. Hello. Yes. I tried to make it bigger. Yes. So that you can see the screen. Uh, yeah. So, yep, they are changing it. Sorry for that. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, they are, they are changing the... Uh, sorry, because I, I don't have... Um, control over the uh, screen they are using OBS for this yep anyway I'll, I'll still move on right now okay so again the benefits of or the advantages of instructional materials or why do we need why do we need to create instructional materials again for organization of the material so it gives a teacher and a student a method of analyzing progress. Next is to focus, okay? to have a guide that allows the students to know and focus on what is being taught. Yes, just like what's happening right now. Okay, <laughs> uh, It's hard for the learners to, to really understand because the instructional material is not that effective. Okay? So yes, they will make it bigger for you. All right, and of course, efficiency, okay? It is far more efficient to have written point of reference for discussions and debates than to have, or than to remember everything, okay? Uh, just, like, just like right now, okay? So I am discussing, I am talking, it's better if yes, okay? Yes, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes. So see, we're able to, well, we're able to right away, um, you utilize the, the learnings that we got or the, the things that we are learning from here. Yes. Okay. So for our instruction to be effective, of course, we have to consider our learners. <laughs> we have to consider what are their needs, okay, since you are visual and it's better for you, it, you, you can easily, you know, remember, or you cannot remember everything. So you need the, vis the, you need the visual aids, okay. So yes, so that, those are the advantages I mentioned. First is to organize the materials to focus, okay, so that the students know what is being taught and to become more efficient, all right. So, yes, I hope we were able to address your needs as my learner for this uh, afternoon. Now, there are various technology platforms that we can utilize as teachers in order to create our instructional materials, okay? Let me first use, okay, this one. I know that a lot of you are used to this, but maybe there are some things from 
this platform that we haven't really maximized yet. Okay, I know that you've been, you're, you're really, uh, you know a lot about Microsoft PowerPoint, but I can tell you maybe there are still some things that you haven't utilized yet. Okay, so this is a slide I created for the uh, Kakuma project. It's uh, the, th this is the uh, Kakuma Academy. This is a project to build schools, learning spaces for students in a refugee camp and Kakuma. So we created PowerPoint presentations because uh, they don't have internet connectivity there. So they are offline. So they need to send offline devices and put PowerPoint presentations. But of course, they need a teacher who will be teaching. So what we did is we recorded slideshows in order for, so that um, there will be a teacher who will be teaching the, the lessons or the topics as they use the devices. Okay? So, as teacher, we can insert audio, right? So, for example, here, um, for example, here, I wanted to discuss this to my student so this powerpoint this uh, microsoft powerpoint the first platform that we will be utilizing we can put audio recordings so that when they play the powerpoint there will be a teacher already who will be teaching so we can click audio record audio and then let's say slide um i used to uh write like uh, what slide number is that so that I know so it's slide six and then I can start recording so I can start recording for example I'll be reading what is pollution what is pollution pollution is anything that makes our planet the earth unhealthy and dirty it happens when the environment is contaminated by waste chemicals and other harmful substances and then stop and then insert and then boom, it's there, okay? What I usually do with my, with my presentation, okay. All right, um, I'm really sorry, okay. I'm gonna stop sharing, all right. And I'll be sharing. All right, how is it now? Can you see? Is it here? Okay, so yes, um, we're just figuring it out how we can, yep. All right, so uh, it's okay. I'm gonna repeat it for you so that you know how we'll, Yes, okay. All right. Anyway, yes, so going back, so uh, I'll just give you, uh, yes, okay, I'll be, uh, we will be displaying the discussion. Um, the, uh, they are just fixing it, yes. All right, they are just fixing it. They will be yes. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. I'm really sorry because I'm remote. <laughs> I'm very remote. Uh, I'm here in China right now, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're really. I'm very remote. <laughs> Okay, so let me go back to that. Yes, it's there right now. Anyway, so I know you guys have been using PowerPoint, but yeah, I, I'm using PowerPoint as uh, uh, and put it in offline devices where students can can write away uh, here the, the the teacher when the teacher 
when the teacher is not around, okay? So when they play the PowerPoint presentation, there will be audio that is that will be playing. So how do I do that? Again, I click the insert, okay? So here you see com insert, so I just click insert, and you can click audio, all right? When you click audio, you can click record audio, and I can start recording. Again, I can put like, uh, I, I usually use the slide number, so six, and then I can start recording. Just hit the her button here. What is pollution? Pollution is anything that makes our planet, the Earth, unhealthy and dirty. It happens when the environment is contaminated by waste chemicals and other harmful substances. All right, so that's how I re uh, do my recording, All right? And I click insert. Yes. And then I put it here. And yes, for the, and I put it here. And then what I do is for it to be played automatically when you play the, uh, when you play the slide, you can click playback and then start automatically, okay? So it will start up automatically when it's played, okay? So when I play this, when I play this slide, it will read or it will play the audio that I recorded, right? So let's play this slide. Let's try playing this slide. I'll just play the current slide. So play from current slides and let's listen. What is pollution? Pollution is anything that makes our planet, the Earth, unhealthy and dirty. It happens when the environment is contaminated by waste, chemicals, and other. All right. Some form. All right. So after that, What's more is you can add subtitles. So when the uh, record, when your slideshow is playing, when your slideshow is playing, it can, you know, it, for visual learners or for for deaf, okay, you can click always use subtitles here. So click slideshow and use subtitles so that when you play it there is a subtitle, a caption under, okay? So I'll be using English first, okay? And when I play it, all right. Some forms of pollution can be seen, like when water gets dirty with garbage or the land is filled with trash. Or some can be invisible, like when toxic chemicals fill the air. The different forms of pollution are water pollution. So land as you pollution, can see down, okay, there at the bottom, stuff, there is the, the subtitle. And smoke are all so examples as of pollution. The PowerPoint is being played. It is showing the uh, sub. There's now a let's caption. discuss what air pollution is. Right. Our atmosphere is made up of so different gases. Even, even I, right as I am talking right now, it is putting this, uh, the uh, PowerPoint presentation is putting the subtitle as I talk right now. Air pollution happens okay. when the air gets dirty. So, it occurs when gases, smoke, or chemicals get into the environment in large amounts that makes it harmful for humans, it, animals, and plants. So what's good with Microsoft PowerPoint? Did you know that cars, the subtitle, trucks, is and that even the planes contribute it, to air pollution? Adjust to the sound. This vehicle uses fossil fuels to power their engines. Now let's review the lessons we discussed so far. Okay, so here, number I would one, review questions. What do you call things that makes our planet unhealthy and dirty? And I give them time to think, right? So as you can see, as I am talking, it's 
the PowerPoint presentation is also receiving my audio and putting subtitle for it, which is really good for visual learners and for those uh, people who have hearing impairment. So that is being addressed by Microsoft PowerPoint. What I really, really like is it can even translate. Wow. So aside from the subtitle, it can translate, right? Pollution make. Let's see how this one. Okay. Let's start from this. Okay. So you can use or you can change the settings. So you can see here spoken language is English. And then the subtitle, you can change it to Filipino, right? So you can change to Filipino. Let's see how it works. I'm not going to be talking first so that, you know, you can see the translating, okay, or how it's being translated. So let me play this, play from current slide, right? Now let's discuss what air pollution is. Our atmosphere is made up of different gases, which is just right to maintain life Air pollution happens when the air gets dirty. It occurs when gases, smoke, or chemicals get into the environment in large amount that makes it harmful for humans, animals, and plants. Did you know that cars, right, wait, trucks, yes. and even the yeah, planes... I turned it on, right? Okay, wait. All right, uh-huh. I turned on the subtitle and it's Filipino. And I'm gonna play this one. And let's play it. Right. Now let's discuss what air pollution is. Let me check. Our atmosphere is made up of different gases, which is just right. I'm sorry. Now let's discuss what air pollution is. Air pollution happens when the air gets dirty. It occurs when gases, smoke, or chemicals get into the environment in large amount that makes it harmful for humans, animals, or and plants. So for the subtitle, I don't... I Did you know that cars, trucks, and even the planes contribute to air pollution. This vehicle. All right. For the sub, for the subtitle, I am not writing the sub. Now let's review the lessons we discussed so far. Number one, what do you call things that makes our planet unhealthy and dirty? So yes, I didn't. I didn't write. I did not write the uh, subtitles. So the moment I am talking right now, it is translating. Can you see? So, uh, for example, if you're teaching in your class, and then okay, so this is the review questions. What do you call things? And that translates right away. Okay. So let me check first again. Go back. Yeah. It is really good for us teachers. Now let's review the lessons we discussed so far. Okay. Uh, let me look for a longer one. Number two. Um, here. Okay. So this one. Let's try playing it. So that you can really see how it works. Now what are some examples so of air what pollutants? What are examples of air pollutants? First is carbon dioxide. Naturally, First is car carbon, carbon dioxide. Naturally, carbon dioxide is produced when humans breathe and used by plants. When we burn fossil fuels and use cars, they discharge carbon air. This, okay, so that's 
Another example is sulfur dioxide. That's how it works. Sulfur so, it, again, it translates from English to Tagalog right away. So if you have students who are having a hard time understanding um, English also, you can teach them and have the subtitle. What else can we do with Microsoft PowerPoint is we can even translate it to other languages. It is supported to around 60 language, more than 60 languages. So if you have, let's say, Chinese students, okay? So again, when you play it, All right. Okay. So what are examples? What are examples? Another example is sulfur dioxides. Sulfur dioxides are produced sulfur by Sulfur dioxides are produced by, by various industrial processes. Coal and petroleum often contain sulfur compounds and through combustion, they generate sulfur dioxide. This is one of the causes for concern over the environmental. All right. Another example of air pollutants is so carbon monoxide. That's it. So it can translate. It can translate to Chinese. It can translate to um, Korean. Again, it translates as I am reading it or as the audio is playing. So, so amazing, right? Particulate it's, 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 matter it's, it's, it's or so PM good. occur naturally from volcanoes. Okay. So that's how you can utilize uh, Microsoft PowerPoint. So aside from the different design ideas, creative designs that you can do with your PowerPoint, you can just make it simple, but you can maximize the use of it by putting or uh, adding uh, recordings or even doing the subtitles, okay? So that's how we can maximize the use of Microsoft PowerPoint. Another uh, tool that I use in my classroom is Microsoft Word. Yeah, simple. Microsoft Word, everyone knows what Microsoft Word is. It's a word processor. You can type there, you can print, but what else can it do? Okay. So in Microsoft Word, you can also do dictations. Okay. So here, when you go to home, you can see here dictate so when you dictate when you say something again microsoft word will receive the audio and translate it so it's speech to text recognition so for example hello good morning kindly answer this lab investigation so boom okay again i am not i am not typing it <laughs> i am not typing it so it is just using dictate all right so don't need to type it anymore just use the dictate feature of microsoft word so this one makes it more efficient. All right, okay. So I turned it off. Let's close this. What more can we do with Microsoft Word? Aside from the dictate feature, it also has the immersive reader, okay? When you say immersive reader, that's now for the students who are having a hard time reading, okay? So those who have reading comprehension problems, they can use Microsoft Word, okay? How do we do that, okay? You can click View, okay? You can click View here, and then you can click Immersive Reader. So this one, it will help your students a lot okay, for those who have reading comprehension problems. So this tool addresses especially the uh, special education students that we have, right? So when you, same, this is my lab, I have the same copy. I just copy pasted it. So it's the same copy. 
So that the one a while ago, it's good for the teachers. Okay, you can dictate, and then it will right away type there. So it will not be a problem. For the students, okay, now for the students, it can read. Okay, let's say I have here, okay, explore different diets. So when you go to view, you will see here immersive reader. A lot of, a lot of uh, Microsoft tools right now, and even other tools, they are using immersive reader. So that actually, that's one of the thing that I am looking for when I am using tools in the classroom or edu ed tech tools in the classroom. I make sure that it has the immersive reader. Because, uh, again, we wanted to address the needs or the, the, yeah, the needs of those with learning disabilities, okay? So how can we do that? We, the student can just click, click play. Explore what happens. Quiz chains. What are some factors that affect a person's weight? What do you think is more important to a person's overall health? Exercise or diet? Why? Explanation phase. Right. Aim number one. So that's too fast, right? So if I wanted to make it slower, okay, I can make it slower and I can even change the one speaking, right? So if I am, if I cannot com still comprehend, okay, I can make it slower and then. The relationship between gender and health for two people of the same physical right. build and opposite gender. That's, that's too slow. Okay. All right. Let's try. Let's try making it a little faster. But yeah, so that's how it works. Phase aim number one. Compare the relationship between gender and health for two people of the same physical build and opposite genders. Yes. Activity one, gender versus health. Yes, um, yes. Uh, so for this immersive reader, again, um, when you go to your Microsoft Word, you can go to view, right? You can go to view, and then you can click immersive reader. So that's for this feature, the immersive reader. But for the, um, the one, the dictate, when you go to home, again, you can click dictate. And you will hear uh, like a bell, okay? And then again, it will translate. Like for example, okay, I'm gonna show you how I dictate again. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. This is a demonstration of how to use dictate feature. Good afternoon to our amazing students and teachers who are watching right now. I'm so glad that you spent time listening to this presentation. All right, so that's that's how you do that's how you do that one. Okay? And yes, so that's it for Microsoft PowerPoint and Microsoft Word. This is the latest version, okay? Um, this is the latest version of Microsoft. And uh, yep. Um, I, have the, uh, I have the Office 365. So I have the Office 365, the Microsoft 365 the one I mentioned during the uh, webinar last time, okay? So that one you can use for your Microsoft PowerPoint and your Microsoft Word. If you have this, okay, maybe your school okay, can, can utilize this more so for your instruction, especially for, um, again, for uh, special education um, student, or yeah, those with learning disabilities with, uh, um, needs All right so it's really I, mean, I really like this um i really like how microsoft is uh not just you know not just utilizing technology for to to 
further the education, but also to make it inclusive, okay, to include everyone um, in the learning process. So that's what uh, that's what uh, Microsoft is doing. So that's how we can utilize Microsoft Word and Microsoft PowerPoint, some of the tools. Uh, they also have Teams. They also have, um, yeah, this one I'm using a while ago. This is the Microsoft Sway. So I know that you're used to Microsoft PowerPoint, but here I'm using Sway for my presentations, right? Okay. Um, another platform, okay, technology platform that we can use for our resources is um, Nuwadu. okay? I just recently found out about this formative, summative, and normative assessment tool, which also has the ability to organize all of your resources in one, okay? So when you go to Nuwadu, uh, I'm not going to, uh, again, for this, for the context of this um, webinar, I'll just be giving you some uh, some of the instructional materials and uh, some uh, some technology platforms that we can use to make our instructional materials. So please uh, um, bear with me if I cannot really give like the in-depth uh, explanation on how you can log in, how you can sign in, right? So I'll just show you how, I'll just give you a brief run through how you can uh, create your resources here, okay? So another, again, another technology platform that I am using is the Nuwadu, okay? So how can I create resource? As a teacher, you can create your own resource, okay, which I will be also discussing later how I use, how I do screen recording, how I create some of my video recordings, what are the tools that I'm using. So here you can create resource, then click resource, and then, okay, so I am a science teacher. I'm going to click science. And for example, I'm teaching a middle school, a middle school teacher. So I'm teaching grade seven. Let's say I'm going to teach ecosystems, right? And there are subtopics here, right? For example, components of an ecosystem. Okay, I'm going to click on the three. I'm going to click next. Okay, here I can upload my own file, like what I mentioned to you. Or you can put links from YouTube and then you can create your resource title. So here you are organizing all of your resources. Okay, if you have your own created um, videos or podcasts, you can put it here. And then um, you can link it or you can connect it with an assessment afterwards. So that's what's good with Nuwadu. Okay. So next, I'll be showing to you how I use. I also use some other formative and uh, formative assessment tools like Quizlet, like Kahoot, okay, and quizzes. So maybe we can make it more interactive if you can follow me, right? So here, this is my Quizlet platform. I usually ask my students, so as an instructional material, I can put the uh, cards, the flashcards here. Okay, so this, are, this, is, this is also good for language learners. Okay, so same as with your Microsoft PowerPoint and Microsoft Word, it has the ability to read from text to speech. Okay, so there's text to speech recognition. So if, for example, I am going to flash this on my student's screen, I'm going to click flashcards, and then, all right, so um, yep, I'm going to teach them the terms, okay, so flip it, and then you can click, and then it will read, okay. All right. All right. Learn. So we can click again. Type what you hear in this audio powered study mode. 
Uh, yes. Okay. So I'm using the Microsoft 365. Yes. I'm using the latest version, Microsoft 365, for my um, PowerPoint and my Microsoft Word. So you can utilize the, uh, you can maximize the um, immersive reader and the dictate and the subtitles. All right. Randomly so, generates tests based on your okay. flashcard that's, set that are print uh, ready. That's what I do. Okay. So for this is especially good. So this um, instructional material can be really good for us, uh, you know, to start your your class. Okay. And also for language learners. Okay? I use I use this for my science class. And then to make it more interactive, I usually go live with my students. Okay. So you can do teams or individuals. So let's see, for example, like that. And then your students can join. And then um, they can engage to a more, you know, motivating, fun way of learning the terms. assessment tool that I use that I really like as well is the use of your my Kahoot okay so Kahoot um, this you can go live as well for this one uh, it's more of like a game show so in my in my science remote learning class I use this you know to to check on their learning so for Quizlet before the uh, before the uh, lesson so i asked them to review the cards to review the terms and for the um for kahoot that's to check okay, to check on their learning there's another formative assessment tool so this is another tool that you can use um oh but by the way for for kahoot what i like also is you can put slides so after Yes, um, actually, I have a YouTube channel. Yes, thank you for asking. Um, I have my YouTube channel, and I put some of the um, instructions, actually, some of my best practices there. I, I'll be opening it later because I'll be opening it later. Yes. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so, yeah, um, you can follow Raymond Mitchell Africa. Yeah, that's my channel, Raymond Mitchell Africa. And yep, um, we uh, you can also use quizzes. This is a formative assessment tool as well. So you can put your questions there. So just this morning, I used this for my class, for my science class. This is what's good with um, with quizzes. Uh, you can put images. So those you know chemical bonds that are hard to uh, draw. Okay, you can just get it and then you can put it here, right? Even this one, okay? It's quizzes. It's Q-U-I-Z-I-Z-Z, -I -Z -Z, right? So again, for those who are asking for my YouTube channel, it's Raymond Mitchell Africa. You will see there a lot of tools that I am using. And there are some of my actual classes, right? So this one, yeah. And what's good with Quizlet, with Kahoot, and with Quizzes, you can check on the uh, some of the sets, some of the, the quizzes that other teachers created. So you can check on that, and then you can use that as well. Well, um, I would say for, uh, that's a good question, offline version for assessment. Um, that's actually one of the uh, challenge of, um, remote learning. So what I did, like right now, so I use this as my formative assessment. What I did for my summative assessment is I asked them to, to, um, like for example, make lab lab investigations, virtual lab investigations. Later, I'll show you the FET simulation that I use. Let me open my. Yeah, I'll, I'll just open here. This is my Microsoft OneNote. Let me check my grade. What's more is that? Uh -huh. 
Oops. Okay, I'll check my green. Oh, sorry, green eight science. All right. So for my green eight science, you will see here. Um, I put yes, okay, lab investigations that the students can do at home. Okay, so they 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 just have to open. You can send it to them. What other teachers are doing? Uh, based from our experience, we've been remote for four months already. We're, we're moving to our fifth month. Is they send out the, uh, yeah, so they send out this, okay? So they, so they um, save it as PDF. They send out to the students and then they, the students give it back. So those students without connect, connection, they can still do the, uh, the, the lab investigation. Or it could be an essay. It could, you know, assessments are not just MCQ questions or uh, short responses. It could be an essay. It could be um, a research. So that's what we did with our students. So just recently, I finished my my online summative assessment. It's a virtual proctored exam. And then uh, we're moving now to our bigger assessments, our summative assessment, which will be done through researches and essays. Yes. Uh, yes, um, actually, yes. If you look at my YouTube channel, there are different, uh, different courses that I recorded on how this can be done. But yeah, maybe I, I will send in this live chat some of the resources that I use. Thank you so much. Um, I'll try to put everything, all the tools together, and then I'll send a link um, for that. Yes, for the formative and summative assessment. Yes, sure. Uh, yeah, so that's for quizzes. Quizlet and Kahoot. Now, I'll try to screen mirror All right so let me share my screen All right so how do i record my class or my uh, tutorial so i am so fond of creating uh, my own uh lessons in my videos so i used let me see. I use the Siri and explain everything. Okay. Yeah, explain everything or explain Edu. So I use the Siri here. So I create my own. Oh, let's say here. Right. So here I create my own video tutorials. Okay, so here um, you cannot just see my screen, but you can click record. And as you move to the slides, okay, so you can draw as well. So, for example, I am recording and then I can draw. Hello, everyone. So I am recording this and then I'll send the recording to my students. So this is the Siri. They have free uh, free app also. Okay, so... Yeah, you can do you can you can do this. So hello C H R D F. Right. I love Philippines. So I love recording. Yeah, I this this one talks about the carbohydrates, fats, and nutrients. So this is Mitchell. So for those who are looking for my YouTube, it's Raymond. Right. I forgot I have a pen. All right, Mitchell. Oops, Mitchell. Africa. Okay. All right, I'm going to make it smaller. All right, so that's Raymond Mitchell, Africa. You can follow this in YouTube. 
Yeah. So I use this as my screen recording so I record my class. All right. I record my class and I send out the recording just like, um, and so I use Nuwadu, I send out the recording, sir. All right. Okay. Okay, let me check. And then yeah, that's that's how I use uh, the screen recording using using this tool. Now I would like to show as well how I use, yeah, pet simulation. So using Microsoft OneNote, like what I showed a while ago, in Microsoft OneNote, you can uh, put virtual labs. You can integrate virtual labs in your OneNote and put the pet simulations there. Um, yep. For example, here I have my um, lesson about atoms, so I just embedded the uh, FET simulations so that students can use it right away. Okay. That's And you can see the screen. So the questions are here. And what's good with this is your students can collaborate. Yeah, okay. So what's good with this is the students can collaborate answering this. And they can right away answer their questions with their own class notebooks. Does it have an online version or apps? Yes. Okay. So this pet simulation there is. Um, I actually wanted to open it using my iPad, but the screen is not. Sorry. Okay. Maybe let's try. I'm going to try creating this first. I'll try to open it using the reflector. Okay. So here. Um, again, your your students can do the simulations here. Let's see, if we play. Um, yes. Um, all right. Uh, Okay, I hope it will play because this is an online platform. Okay, now your again your students can open uh, have their own yes, okay, this one. So after they did the simulations, here they answer the questions. I check it right away. You can see the blue one, these are the answers of my my uh, students and the check. So I check it myself. Here. So here you can give immediate feedback. So that's what's good with uh, that one. So I integrate, I, I app smash. So I call it app smashing. So I put the pet simulation together with my OneNote. So what's good with OneNote is you can work on it offline and then once you're online it will be integrated it will be it will be sync right now um here let me see okay i want uh, this is the fed simulation okay so this is the fed simulation i am using for my science All right so can you see the screen yep so this is the fed simulation so you there are a lot of so here 
So there are a lot of, uh, you will see here the building atom. Yes. Okay. And then the students can use this. And all right. So, so again, if, um, Again, um, there are different ways, okay? If your student has the app of the FET simulation, then they can, right? So they can play it using FET simulation. All right, wow, okay? Hydrogen, you can play on this. And then they have the questions written here. So if the students, so that's that's how I differentiate also the, the method. So if the student has the FET simulation, it's good, the app. If the student doesn't have the FET simulation, then the student can go here and then do it here, okay? So there are different ways. Now, um, it will be sync once the student is connected. If the student is not connected, then um, it will again sync once the student has the connection, right? So if you get what I mean. So students can work on it while they are uh, offline and then once they are off online it will be synced okay so this is a fed simulation so if you're using and when you go to fed simulation they also have some worksheets prepared there by teachers which is really really good all right okay so that's about us our my one note and my yeah. so it's really fun okay here and then here as you can see there are questions there are questions regarding the lesson here and then the students can answer so here building an app on the students can answer and can say so in remote learning and even in your own classroom, it can work, okay? So when you, transi when you transition to remote learning, you can use it. When you transition, to, transition back to your normal classroom, then you can right away do it. Or you can still continue it. Next is, wow, okay? So since we are here, I'm going to show you as well how I use this cube here, as you can see. There is a cube here, very small cube that I use in my teaching. Okay, so um, okay, so here I call I, we call it the merge cube. You can teach. Sorry, I'm uh, I'm a science teacher. So here, the merge cube. The merge cube is a holographic object that you can hold in the palm of your hand, right? So this is what a merge cube looks like. Uh -huh. Let me see. Let's see. All right. Oops. Okay. Great. So let me show you. So I'm in, let's say, phone mode. I'm going to skip this. So this is the merge cube here. Right. Um, how will you? Okay. Wait. So this is the merge cube. Yeah, that's my merge cube, right? This is the merge cube. And when I open it, this is what it looks like. So I can teach, I can teach the human body using this tool. What's good with this is, as you can see on top, there is a record, record button. Can you see it, the record button? So again, you can create instructional material using this. Okay, so here, um, let me full screen this. So for example, the brain, I can click the brain, okay? And then, oops, I wanted to know what is this? Okay, it's the frontal lobe, okay? So we use this lobe for speaking, thinking, planning, and making decisions, studying for a test, deciding, What to wear and planning your next move in chess is all thanks to your frontal lobe. 
do a nine move. Great. So if I move here, I can also check. So that's my merge cube. Okay, you can see. All right. So that's the occipital lobe. So this is good for science. You're teaching. The occipital lobe is our brain's visual processing center. So again, you can use this to create your own recorded videos or presentations and then you can upload it in YouTube or you can send it to your students, right? So that's how you can teach the human body. You can also have the lungs, the heart, large intestine. Intestine, small intestine, the liver. All right. So I wanted to know more about the liver. That's your bile. The liver processes the nutrients we eat into forms the rest of the body can use. That's the work of your bile. That's the function of your bile. Waste products either get carried by a bile back to the intestine or goes through your blood, through your kidneys. So actually, you can teach. Right. Hi everyone. Okay. All right. Okay. And what else? There are a lot of apps that you can use. There's also oh, this one is about the solar system. Okay. This is about the solar system. By the way, don't worry. If you don't have this merge cube, okay, you can look at the internet. There are cutouts of the merge cube that you can do. It's just the code that you need. It's not as it's not as you know as accurate as the merge cube here, but it will still do its work. Okay, I tried it. We had an exhibition two years ago. The students, so what they did is they let the low, they created, they created their own, uh, their their own, not really the merge cube. They created their own topics using the merge cube. Okay, I hope I can let you, I, I can share it to you. We, we don't have much time, but yeah, the students created their own content for the merge cube, and then they they teach the they they teach the lower school students. Uh, using the merge cube and then they let them so they let them uh, make their own merge cube using paper cutouts so you can use that as well okay so here the solar system yes okay that's so cool right so the sun I wanted to know more about the sun so the sun is so big that over 1 million Earths could fit inside it. And then again, you can record. What's good with this is you can record. Okay. You can record it. You can see the record button there. And as an instructional material, I can explain to my students. All right. Hi, everyone. And this is my merch cube. So this is the sun. Hi. So what is the sun doing? Okay, so very interactive. Ooh, all right. So the sun is so big that over 1 million Earths could fit inside. It's 93 million miles away and light from the sun. Takes. So it's very, yeah, it's so cool, right? Yeah, I like it. I like it, right? So kids, um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm not a SPED teacher and not a SPED specialist, but I think this one will be really good for students, right? <laughs> Sorry, I'm being a kid. Yeah, so again, you don't really need to have this cube. We did, I hope, see, let you see some cutouts. But yeah, we did that one. They, they cut it out and uh, they created their own merge cube. We call it the merge cube. I love this. This is so, this is just so cool. This is really, really amazing, okay? So what's good with this is, yeah, so wow, I can see, see, the solar system is just right on your palm, right? So here I wanted to, what's this? Oh, Jupiter. Let's see, oh, how many satellites? Oh, okay. All right. Then, where's the Earth? I want to look at the Earth. 
I can determine till it's there. <laughs> it's a deeper. And let's see further. Check it out. Yeah, I'm going to do more about the earth. So, yeah, that's it. That's how you can use your merch cube. Alright. Um, there's one more. Um, what is that? The, uh, I think it's not here, but there's also like the cell, cell AR, yes, this one. I like this also. And yeah, here it's more about cells. Yes, um, Merge, uh, Merge Cube, this, uh, the, the tool, the Merge Cube, yes, of course, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Um, and there are free free apps. Yes, these are just free apps. I didn't really download. I, I downloaded it for free in Google and in um, in uh, it, you can use Android and you can use Apple as well. Yes, no problem. And then um, again, if you don't have the Merge Cube, you can search for Merge Cube. Oops, why? You can search for Merge Cube. There are cutouts. You can use that. So here, there is an explore. Wow. Yeah. See? Okay. You can see that. And I'll check on the... Uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to check on the log. Wow, what's that? Oh, fungal cell. I wanted to check the fungal cell. What's in... Whoa. Wow. Boom. <laughs> Those are the parts of the cell. I wanted to study about the parts of the cell. I wanted to study about the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. That's how the smooth endoplasmic reticulum looks like. Right? And then again, you can... Oops, change it to elementary, middle, or high school. So you can use it. Um, for I'm I'm looking for I'm looking for other like oh there is like a museum so probably um, for merge cube uh, museum so I think it could be good for social studies but what we did what I actually did is there is what we call the co spaces edu it's a space is a, a a platform where the students can create. And use Merge Cube to create their own content. So what I did before is I asked them to use Merge Cube and create their own projects that is in line with a topic, a certain topic in a subject. So for example, for math, for language, there uh, I have a Korean student, and then he used Merge Cube to teach basic Korean language. I have students who are into math. And then he used that to he used that to to teach as well um, math. And what's good with that co spaces edu? You can check on that also. Um, you can put videos. So imagine if the videos are playing here. Wow, it's just amazing, <laughs> right? Okay. So yep. Uh, yeah, that's that's how. Ooh, I can, I, I'm utilizing um, this merge cube, so parts of the body, solar system, uh, and if your kids wanted to play, they can also use that one. So, yeah, basically that's how you can use. And then, well, last, just last one is how I used, how I use VR. Okay, so VR as an instructional material. So I know some of you are familiar with VR. Now, how can we use that in teaching? Okay, I'm really sorry because I am a science teacher. So uh, most of my most of my instructional materials are in science. Okay, so I'm going to show you. Yep, yeah, this. Okay. I'm going to make it bigger. Um, let's check the in mind. Uh, let's just do this in mind. So, oops. Okay. Oops, maybe it's not. Or maybe the in mind. 
this one the museum viewer you, uh, that i told you like just a while ago uh -huh. oh because it's open already all right let me check hmm. anyway let's check on the in mind and how it's working this is uh, for uh, VR, so virtual reality in the classroom. How can we integrate virtual reality or virtual? Oh my, it's not working, so maybe. How can we? Okay, I'm going to stop yelling first. All right. Okay. So here, okay. All right, so I'm going to show you how I use VR in my classroom. Um, I just use in in cell VR in here um, in mind VR, right? So imagine if you can use this. Okay, so that's scientific VR games. This will be good as well as you know instructional material to let your students be in inclined be motivated to learn so here you can start okay and oops i wanted to check on that i hope you can see me all right because i'm using okay hope you can see me because i'm using okay so i'm gonna use sorry I, i'm using vr right now uh i cannot read read your messages but i'll just have like a brief yeah wow i hope i hope you can see scientist me there yeah. scientist john's classmates argue loudly between classes the so argument like heats that. up and a fight and yeah if you are you that uh i hope you can see me here wow this is just yeah, interesting this will really you know spark uh, curiosity among your students. What does it look like? Oh, what is this teacher? What are those? And, uh, yep. Why is it connected? Why? What's the dopamine? Okay, so this is another instructional material that you can use using VR. Okay. And, uh, this one I use in my VR. And then there is also Incel VR. Nor at the end of the day. So, you know, after the after the especially for middle school students, after they do this, they can Well, be, it's not a job. They will business. be asking your teacher but when the fight starts. John will definitely be there to watch. I the saw show. their dopamine. What are this doing Destiny with our lost. nervous system, with our brain cells, with our neurons? What are the functions of this neurotransmitters? So yeah, that's how you can you can be more creative in your instructional instructional materials. Okay. Alright. Okay, so yep, so that's it. Uh-huh. Alright, okay. So that's it for our the different instructional materials so i hope you can see me i was like watching I, i'm doing i'm using this while i'm telling you and it's so amazing okay so yeah you can use you know simple what i always tell teachers is you know to keep it simple keep the content simple especially in remote learning uh we have we need to take note, we need to consider that face-to-face, -face, oops, sorry for that. Face-to-face <laughs> so, -face teaching is different from remote learning. So we have 
to keep the uh, content simple. We have to keep the process simple. We have to keep the expectation simple, all right? Now, uh, I know that you are overwhelmed, probably so overwhelmed with a lot of tools that I used, that I presented, but I know that you can, right, I'll just share my screen. Um, you can use some of these tools. Uh, you can use some of these tools in your own classroom, okay? Make it more interactive, make it more engaging. You don't have to use everything at once. Make it step by step, little by little, you know, baby steps. You can start with Microsoft PowerPoint. You can start with Microsoft Word. And yeah, um, and then move on. You know, make it make it interesting, make it motivating for students that they are at, they, they will be waiting for something. They are, you know, um, surprise them okay, with what you can do in your classroom. And yes, so that's it for this afternoon. Um, anyway, the, we, the, the chat is here. Uh, I'll be uh, going back to this ch chat and put all of the uh, resources that I use today. I know it's overwhelming. There's a lot for you to digest. Again, baby steps and do not stop uh, your curiosity. Do not stop from learning. Um, and just, uh, we have to be, we have to embrace technology. Technology is here to improve our teaching, but at the end of the day, it's still us teachers that matters. So how we implement this, how we put or use this instructional materials in the classroom will make a huge difference and will make a positive classroom environment where the students are learning collaboratively, where, where they share their creative thoughts, their creative ideas. And yes, um, just like our students, we teachers, we need to undergo the same process of learning because it's, it's a cliche, but yes, learning is uh, is. A lifetime process okay? we should not stop learning and we should not stop teaching okay so I do believe that Filipino teachers are one of the best teachers in the world so please please continue in motivating continue inspiring these young minds okay not just with the content but you know sparking their creativity and um, empowering their voices okay so thank you so much. Yes, um, I'll be uh, posting here. Again, you can go to Raymond Mitchell Africa in my YouTube channel. It's Raymond Mitchell Africa. You will see there some. I was, I'm was i actually planning on putting you know these tools also that you can use. So I will be, uh, uh, I think right now I'm more motivated to, to share all of this. So I'll be sharing all of these tools that I am using. Okay, my, uh, I've been using these tools and a lot of tools in my classroom for several years, okay? So uh, there are advantages and disadvantages. It's not always perfect, okay? I'm not perfect. That's why I continue learning, okay? So just keep in mind, again, technology is, uh, it, it, can, it can be efficient, yes. It might be more efficient than us teachers, but it will never be superior because we are the creators. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon okay and have a great afternoon i hope you learned a lot uh you can feel free to message me in youtube and in my facebook you can look for me africa raymond mitchell Magpantai, and i would be more than willing to help and uh assist you in your journey in remote teaching and integrating technology in the classroom. Thank you so much and have a great